We're here for the conference School of the Prophets. And how many of you when you're in a school that you're there to learn? So you're here to learn. So how many of you came prepared to learn? Okay, hope you got pencil and paper and stuff. You're going to see some things, hear some things that you may not have heard before or maybe you have not heard it said this way. I'm not here just to tell you new things or to sound wonderful or smart or anything like that. My purpose for being here is to glorify God. And I want to show you the greatness of our God in everything, even your body. That's my purpose here. It's to show you the greatness of God. Uh, the theme of this uh, conference is called, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Revealing Cosmic Secrets. So we're going to reveal some cosmic secrets. I'm, I'm, I'm still getting there. <laughs> it's Revealing Cosmic Secrets. So we're going to reveal some secrets. And before I get into that, I just wanted to announce it while I'm thinking of it. Otherwise, I have all these thoughts going through my mind. This year, October, we're doing Feast of Tabernacles in San Diego. So uh, we'll be letting pastors know about it. And so it's going to be awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. New inspiration, church. Now, um, I want to read something. And we're going to get into this word here. I, I, I text uh, pastor a few nights ago. I was at home and I was cooking. And in the spirit, I was drunk walking across the kitchen floor. Because the Holy Ghost was downloading a whole lot of information. And so I'm staggering and I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, how am I going to say this? And I got my little note pad right there on the counter while I'm in the middle of cooking and stuff. And writing down this and God is saying this and oh my God, just, you know. I mean, I know that the word is living. Yeah. It's alive. Are you excited about that? Yeah. yeah. You know, there are a lot of people in the kingdom of God that um, seem to think that this word is no longer relevant. A lot of Christians that they, they get a level of understanding or revelation and they think that this is no longer relevant. It's no longer relevant, you know. So because I have become all of this and I know who I am, I don't need this anymore. But you know what? I need this because this is the living word. And I'm not talking about just the ink that is written on this paper here, the 1611 version of it. But I'm talking about the spirit that's beneath the letter of this word. The spirit that's beneath the letter of this word is ageless. It is eternal. It, it, it goes on and on. I don't care about 10,000 years from now, you'll be able to take this book and be able to decode mysteries from it. Because this is a book of mysteries. And we're going to reveal some cosmic secrets here tonight that God is revealing to us <coughs> so that we can progress further in him. For example, when you heard the message that we call salvation, all at once you had a... Uh, okay. You had faith to get saved, as we call it, right? And later on, you heard the message of being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, and you had faith to receive the Holy Spirit, right? You heard a message of being healed. You can have healing. And you've got faith for that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And so uh, we are teaching and what pastor is doing here, we're bringing not something that is new to God. It's not some new age theology or anything like that because there's really no such thing as new age. Everything, there's nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. It's just that various people, they, they find certain truths and stuff, and then they, they lay, oh, this is new age. No, stuff has been in the Bible for thousands of years. It's just been rejected by most of modern Christianity, Western Christianity, because we have been told that you must believe things a certain way, and that is the only way it is, because our denomination says so. And anything outside of my denominational or what our church teaches, it must be heresy. And so we've been afraid to step into other things and to uh, see uh, what the word of God says and understand the whole counsel of God. So tonight I'm here to declare and this weekend is to declare the whole counsel of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to start off by talking about something that is very um, how can I say it? Um, controversial? Okay, I'm going to talk about divine astrology. 
and we're going to go right in into the cell and so many other things here, but it's going to be all tied together. But I want to let you know that this is May 5th. Somebody said Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> okay, but not only that, but you know, if you if, if it was not so cloudy and overcast here, you would be able to see a meteor shower tonight. There's a meteor shower happening. If you watch the news, it'll tell you about it. It's called a, a acrid, a, a queer, a queerid, a queerid meteor shower. That's what it's called. And uh, it's happening tonight and tomorrow night. Now, that is not by chance. Because I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that everything is a sign. And I've gone places around the world and God gives me signs. He gives me signs in the heavens, signs in the earth, and all kinds of things. The rains that you got here today, last night, and it's maybe tomorrow, that's not just happening. But it's a prophetic sign of what is happening of God pouring out His Spirit. Now, if you understood what I mean about this meteor shower that is happening in the constellation of Aquarius. Somebody say Aquarius. Aquarius. Okay, come on, say it like you're not afraid to say it. Aquarius. Ah, great, great, great. Now, this meteor shower is happening in the constellation of Aquarius. How many Aquarius people in here tonight? See there? Praise God. All these strange folks, okay? <laughs> Okay, this meteor shower is happening there. Now, if you understood what is in Aquarius, it is a man pouring out of his urn water. It is the age of the outpouring. Is what Joel talk, talked about in Joel chapter 2. He prophesied, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. The same thing that Peter talked about in Acts chapter 2. They were talking about what is happening in the heaven. See, we're moving into that age that is called Aquarius now. All right? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why they came out with the song back in, I think, the 60s, was it? This is the dawning of the age of what? It was, it was very prophetic, and I'm not getting into all of that tonight, but it was very prophetic. And I'm only bringing that up tonight is because there is something very special happening in Aquarius tonight. And there's a meteor shower that is happening in Aquarius, signifying God's pouring out His Spirit, God pouring out blessings, God pouring out abundance for His people. Hallelujah. Specifically at this time that we're gathered here in this place. And you that may be watching or listening, whenever you're watching or listening, since in the realm of spirit there is no time, you can, you can have it also. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay, so now the sun is 16 degrees in Taurus right now. And that's also interesting, it was important, it happens every year, uh, because Taurus represents the house of finances. How many could use some of those? Yeah. Okay. okay, I know some of you can't. Some of you got it, got it all. Okay, see me after church, maybe. <laughs> or when the pastor raised the offering. Over. Add lots of zeros, okay? After a number, okay? <laughs> all right. And so, and so, now, God created these signs for a reason. The scripture says, the heavens declare, prophesy, speak for. That's what the word declare means. The glory of God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 it says um, that God created the, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars for signs. Everybody say signs. signs. Come on, say it louder. Signs. You're in school. Signs. It's the Hebrew word oath. Oath. Say oath. Say it loud. Oath. That's not loud. Say it loud. Oath. Oath. Okay. You spell it in Hebrew with the aleph, the vav, and the tav. So it would be the Isle of the Vav and the Tav, right in from right to left. Okay, that's the way it's written like it in Hebrew. And if you would look at that word, the meaning of that word, oath, it means for miracles. It means signs, signals. It also means proof. So when somebody comes to tell you that there's nothing to the heavens out there and this is just the realm of the devil, you can say, God created that. And he did not create it just for us to look at. Although it's beautiful. But there are signs there. There are messages there. Read Psalms 19. It says that uh, day unto day utters knowledge. And night unto night speech. There is no nation where the language of the heavens have not gone. 
That's why you find people that understand the stars in every nation on the planet. It is the oldest religion in the world because before they had the Bible, they had the heavens. And that's what they read and that's what told them that the Messiah was coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matter of fact, if you look at it, especially the constellation Scorpio, you will see the death of the Messiah because it's laid out there in the heavens. It's there. Hallelujah. It's powerful. And so he says it would be for signs. It would be oath. Say oath again. Oath. Huh. Now, if you look at the Hebrew language, and if we get into the message, this is yet part of it. You look at the Hebrew language, the Aleph. Everybody say Aleph. Aleph. Teaching Hebrew here tonight. Aleph. Come on, say it again. Aleph. That's the first letter of the Hebrew language. Say it again. Aleph. Okay. Uh, Aleph is the first letter, which means the head. And if you draw a picture graph of it, or, or how can I say? Yeah, a picture graph of it, or a hieroglyph of it, because it was originally written like in, in glyphs, like hieroglyphs, is a picture of a bull with horns. And I won't get into all of the meanings of that, because it's highly astrological. But it also means the first, or the head, speaking of Christ, being the head of all creation. So this word signs here in Genesis 1.14 is the word uh, oath, which is spelled Aleph Vav Tav. Okay, A-L-E-P-H, that's the first letter. All of that has meaning to it. We're not going to get into that, but just for your own studies or whatever. And then Vav or Wav, W-A-V is the second. And then the last is Tav, T-A-V. Now, the Aleph means the head, the first of all creation. The Vav, or the Vav, means the nail. It is a picture graph of someone like hanging. Mm -hmm. And then the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav. It's the shape of a cross. So he is the Aleph and the Tav. The Greek would say the Alpha and the Omega. So he is the Aleph and the top. And so the message there that God gave us, that he just hid right there in Genesis 1.14, was showing us that through the constellations, through the signs, the oath of the constellations, you would be able to see that the head of all creation would come and die on the cross for you and I. Right there in your word. Hallelujah. And it's laid out in the heavens. And it's also in your body. Hallelujah. Somebody say, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Mighty God we serve. So right now the sun is like 16 degrees in Taurus. I mean Taurus people in here. Bullheaded people. I should have known that. No. <laughs> Great. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. People born on the sign of Taurus, we all can prosper and stuff. But the sign of there are certain signs of the of, of the zodiac house that God created that releases specific types of energy for various for, for specific things. And so this is why on Wall Street or near Wall Street you will see the raging bull. Because those people understood that. They understood the sign and the symbols and the very power of it. And Wall Street represents finances, money. This is why the, uh, in the G12 meetings and some of the major financial meetings are held when the sun is in Taurus. But see, in Christianity, we wouldn't know that. We would just think, oh, they're just having a meeting. Huh. No, they don't do anything without consulting the stars. Because they know the influences of the stars. And as the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ in this hour, relearn this forgotten prophetic language that God has placed in the Bible, you will align yourself with the heavens and you will say, Thy will be done in earth as it is in the heavens. Because you realize that you are one with the heavens. And everything that is within the heavens is within you. Matter of fact, you are the constellations. You are the stars of the heavens. Daniel said that they that be wise should shine like the stars of the heavens. Praise God. Okay, are you following what I'm saying? So they have the bull out there. Hong Kong also has a bull because they understand the power of that. And that. And if you do certain things during certain times of the year, it's just like when you're planting seeds. You don't go sow seeds and expect a crop if you're planting stuff in the winter, do you? But there are seasons for things. Also in the realm of finances and other things. You do certain things in the alignment with the heavens and stuff, you get greater results. Greater results. God, God will, and these people of the world 
that control the finances, they understand that and they use that science to enrich themselves so that they can further enslave you and I. But I believe that everything is going to get turned around. Somebody say, turn around. Say, turn around, turn around. It's going to get turned around. Everything is going to get turned around. We're God's people. Uh, we are the head. We are the Aleph and not the tail. Hallelujah. 